Let's get into another seven Caillou challenge. This one's simply called Incrementer. Given an input of an array of digits, return the array with each digit incremented by its position in the array. The first digit will be incremented by one, the second digit by two, etc. Make sure to start counting your positions from one and not zero. And we know in computer science that typically we do start with zero. So we'll have to adjust. Your result can only contain single digit numbers. Here's an extra catch. So if adding a digit with its position gives you a multiple digit number, i.e. greater than or equal to 10, only the last digit of the number should be returned. And I suppose, uh, yeah, we're good, Never mind. Uh, notes, return an empty array if your array is empty. And arrays will only contain numbers, so don't worry about checking that. I'm not sure why they have to say that, because we can see from the contract here, integer array, right? They can only be integers. Those are not, we know those are numbers, so don't think we needed that note. But check out the examples in case that description wasn't clear. Consider the input 1, 2, 3. You're going to transform that into 2, 4, 6, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 in the second position is 4. 3 plus 3, the third position, is 6. That's how they get those, and they kind of break it down for you here. 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2. And then you can go ahead and do the same example. The second example is nice because it gives an example of when you're, you have an element that goes over um, 9. So 4 plus 1, you get 5. 6 plus 2, you get 8. 9 plus 3, you get 12 but they just want the last digit, right? So we put the two there. One plus four is five, and three plus five is eight. So that should be really clear by now. Go ahead and head over to the challenge and go ahead and pause the video and give this one an honest attempt. You got this, and resume the video when you're ready. Okay, so what, what are they asking us to do here, right? They give us this, integer array of numbers and they're basically if you look at the instructions they're telling us to sort of transform it right we're running a process on each element it's going to be the same number of elements that we are originally passed in but they're going to be modified in some way right they're going to have some amount added to them and then they're going to be trimmed if necessary to be just a single digit so when i encounter that kind of situation where you're basically just taking a collection, an input collection, and you're going to perform some math operations on each element. It's like you're transforming the collection, right? You're transforming each element. And so the link method, I'm going to go ahead and bring that in now. I'm going to be using link for this solution. The link solution that I think of when I see transforming elements is this select. Remember, I'm on enumerable. If you want to follow me in the docs, go under methods and you'll find select. And you can see it projects each element of a sequence into a new form, right? That sounds just like what we want. It's transforming it into a new form from its original value into some other value based on some mathematical functions we want to process on it. So very useful. Now, another thing to note with this problem that should set off alarms for you is that they wanted it based on the, we have to account for the index of each element as well, right? So the index matters because we have to add that amount. And so you should have seen if you've been watching my other videos that some of these link methods have an option for passing in the index as well. Because you might think otherwise, oh, well, I can't use link. Now I'm stuck using a for loop because I need refer I need some kind of um, access to each element's index. But uh, link is looking out for you. You'll notice in the select method here, we've got an overload, right? This is probably the one you may be used to, where we simply pass a lambda function in that says what to do to each element. But if you notice this second one, right, you got this int32 in here, and it projects each element 
of a sequence into a new form by incorporating the elements index. Nice. So we get to bring the index along for the ride. That's great. And you can click, it'll jump us right down the page to the, the overload with the index. So um, I always encourage people to read through these. I don't read the whole thing to people because that would probably be boring. But what I like to tell people to do is yeah, go right down to the examples if you want to see something, because sometimes the text descriptions aren't so clear, especially if you're new. So you can see these things in action. Look, normally when we write Lambda functions, right, you might see just the fruit there, right? You didn't have the parentheses and the comma, but now you have that in this index, right? And we know Lambda functions are just shorthand for regular functions. It's just a nice, concise syntax for us to specify that. So we don't have to go out and make all these extra methods, right, that we would never even use again. That's the convenience of, of the lambdas. So you can imagine if we look at a method, right, what do methods look like? They got these parentheses with parameters in it, just like we saw, right? You can think of that as the parameter list, then the arrow, and then your body. You know, and if you had a complex lambda, you could have, um, you'll see those with start with and end with curly braces, you know, just like functions start and end with curly braces. But the thing with lambdas, especially at beginner level stuff, is that the, the operation that you're running is so simple, it's just a one liner, so people usually omit the curly braces. But if it's it can be helpful to use them or imagine them there to help you visualize that it's just a, it's just a, another way of writing a function, right? Just a nice shorthand. So don't be intimidated by that. But we got what we need here, right? We select, uh, give our element some variable name. You get to make this fruit part up and then we'll just, uh, we'll use index too. That's a great name for for that so let's try this what can we do we got numbers right and we're going to use the link method select like we said because we want to transform each element and so select will take care of feeding us each of the elements and we know that with the overload we looked at we get to make a parameter list and since we're dealing with numbers i'll name the elements of each give them a variable name n works n is very common for integer variable um, num i'll use here i'm just trying to make things very clear for you and then i'll use index right so remember each time select is going to go through numbers it's going to start at the beginning and it's going to populate num with the, the first value and index will be zero it'll process again num will be the second value in the array if there are hard more than one and then index gets bumped up to one. It'll automatically handle feeding in the element, the current element, and its index. Good. So what's the other part of a lambda, right? We have to write the arrow, and then we get to define the body. So the next part is we know that we're just simply really easy, right? We have to add the index to the num's value. So we'll say num plus index. But if you remember in the instructions, right, they, they, they got weird on us. They wanted us to start from one instead of zero, you know. Okay, fine. We're computer scientists. We don't like that. But, you know, we work for people. They, they get to make the rules. So good. Num index plus one. Um, we're just adding one to the index every time. Just you can think of it as shifting from zero. So we start at that one. And then next time index will be one plus one is two. Then I'll go to two plus one is three. Hopefully that's clear. So good, but that's not the end of the story, right? We have to check for overflow, if you will. Remember they only want a single digit. So this could be another time to pause if you didn't already figure this out and think of how you can get the last digit if I just give you an arbitrary number that's greater than or equal to 10. So if I said 127 or anything, think of a, a general way where you could peel that seven off and, and get just that value. And if you want, uh, you can pause and try to think of that on your own. 
I think this has come up in other videos, but if not, we'll take care of it here. So I've got my, my sum, right? Just what we wanted to do, it could be over 10, so now we're gonna handle that part if it's over 10. We'll say modulo 10. And when you do that, modulo gives you the remainder after dividing by 10. And if it helps, go through some examples so you can see that if you don't already know that. I pulled up this little modulo calculator here so you could see that they're doing, you get to put in the values A mod B, right? In our case, B, we put in 10, right? And so just do some of these, go 467, you know, look, it, it took the seven, right? It says the answer is seven, last number, um, 981, it should get the one, right? Every time it'll give you the, the last number, right? So hopefully that convinces you, but uh, do the math if, if that's confusing. So good. We know that should take care of it then, right? We did the addition. We corrected if necessary for some overflow. And the final bit, remember, honor the contract. Methods are contracts, right? They're saying, hey, buddy, I give you this. You give me this. I give you numbers. You're going to give me an, back an, an array of integers with um, modified the way that I want. Contract. So does this fulfill the contract? No, it doesn't. You can look at the select method. If you don't believe me, uh, it should say what it returns. See, it's returning an I enumerable of the type. So we're dealing with integers. It'd be an I enumerable of integer. So, but we know that these enumerables have some handy methods and you can see, remember, you know, when you're doing these challenges, keep this enumerable open and the methods expanded. And then, you know, as you're thinking of things and trying to find answers, just scroll these and see if a lot of them are pretty intuitive by looking at what they're named. Look at this one, and we've, we've probably used this before. To array, right? That's what we need to fulfill the contract. So let's take this I enumerable of integers that we have right now based on our current statement, and then finally convert them to an array. And so this is um, another one-line link solution. I think this one was easy enough to follow. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll do another version with just using looping constructs and things like that, but I think I'll call this one here, but of course I won't claim victory yet. Good, and submit. So go ahead and look through other people's answers and see if you can come up with any other ideas. It, this looks like what we came up with, right? You can see they called their index i, you know, anything. As long as you can keep the variable name straight, you know, that's that's what matters. It doesn't take that many letters to type out num or index, so I don't, that's fine by me. It can get kind of ugly sometimes, though, when you're using a bunch of x, y, z, and you're not sure what's what. But yeah, here's the same kind of thing with a loop, right? Nothing wrong with that. You can do that. And uh, I don't know if there's much else to look at. But yeah, go ahead and go through those as you like. As usual, hit me up with questions, comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.